In this movie we're going to examine some of the content of the Archicad Start BIM Suite using Archicad SE 2011. This is Archicad SE pretty much as it installs from the, the DVD. In this case I've tweaked the content slightly so that the toolbox and the info box are docked to the side as I'm working in this widescreen format for recording the movie. The first important area to look at is the navigator because this helps determine how the project's actually defined. Because the content's based on the BIM methodology of all the data being contained within one model, this navigator helps break that model down into manageable elements. So for example, here we can see we have stories, we have a section, we have some elevations, and we have some details. In addition to this, we also have 3D documents, which can help to communicate the content of the model. There are also further options for 3D views, schedules and indexes, which we'll come back and look at shortly. First thing I'm going to do with the model is actually change some of the settings relating to the windows. If I look at one of the elevations, we can see that none of the windows actually have sills attached to them. I'm going to use Find and Select to filter only the windows I'm actually looking to change. In this case I've defined a setting that's going to select all the windows based on the W114 object with a width of 450mm. Because this is a setting I may use in the future, I'm actually going to store this and give it an appropriate name. Once this criteria is selected, I can then just hit the Add button and that will find seven windows within this elevation. I can now drop into the settings and take a look at some of the advanced parameters. Initially the width is already set, but if I skip through, I can choose things like I want to apply a sill and a board. I may choose to redefine the size of the frame and the sash content, apply an upper or lower transom, or change the sash options. One thing I'm going to change is the reveal settings. I'll apply this slanted negative reveal and I'll alter the reveal settings, the depths here. In addition to this, if I was working within a cavity wall, I could change the settings for the cavity closure in here. With regard to the sill settings, I'll change the type to be a stone sill and I'll go to its materials and change these to be sandstone. The list of materials here is a sample list that comes with most projects. However, you can add an infinite range of your own materials based on either web images or photographs taken with a digital camera. I've added some parameters listing which I'll return to later. If I now hit OK, you'll see these changes are actually updated within the elevation. While examining the plan it becomes obvious that the sliding doors to the front of the building have no cavity closers, so I'll quickly use Find and Select to select the sliding doors on a criteria that's already set, go to the parameters and quickly apply a prefabricated cavity closer to all of these doors. I've now zoomed in in one of the windows to the side where you can see the plaster returns into the opening. It is important for construction purposes that this plaster is selectable to display on or off. We actually have a setting called Partial Structure Display that allows me to, rather than display an entire model, switch off the finishes so we can see the finished construction sizes. I'll switch this back on but I'm going to decide to show some insulation within this cavity rather than just an empty space. While examining this detail, I'm going to change the settings of this wall to show some soft insulation. Within the settings of the wall itself, I'm going to change the fill type to show the appropriate insulation. See the insulation is now shown within the wall. This applies to the plan view as well as the sections. In addition, within this dialog we can also control the model display. Plaster switched off, there is no plaster on the bottom wall and now the plaster returns. Returning to the ground floor, I'm going to add some slight annotations to the dimensions to make them clearer. I've selected these three components and we're going to use intelligent text to add further information. Let's set the measured value and add the further text. This dimension value remains associative, so if I was to take one of the columns and move its position the text updates automatically. As we've added some details to the windows and doors, we'll take a quick look at the schedules. The first schedule we'll look at is a plain text schedule, which gives us an indication of the doors, their ID numbers, and which room they're to and from, and their general dimensions. We can display this in a more graphical format and produce plan and elevation symbols to help aid identification of the particular windows and doors. This schedule can also be listed in an infinite range of combinations of settings with and without graphics. Once this information has been created in Archicad, it can be edited in a way similar to Excel, where we can drag columns, 
we can increase heights, we can change text, we can modify in a very intelligent way. If necessary, this data can be exported just using Save As, and we can drop out to a Word document, an Excel sheet, DWFs or PDF files. In this case, I'll export to Excel. You can see here that the graphic content remains intact. In addition, elements such as the bold italic text, the different colours, the formatting has remained intact. Schedules can be based for doors, for windows, or even simple things like a zone schedule, which gives us a complete indication of the areas, perimeters, volumes, and inventory of elements within these areas within the model itself. What I'm going to do now is return to the 2D window and import a survey of a wider area. This is achieved using a direct import of the surveyor's data. Once the data is placed on the plan, I'll return to the 3D window, and you can see more of the surrounding area. To help enhance the quality of the output here, we can actually go into the 3D window settings and switch on sun shadows. This, as you can see, instantly changes the presentation of the model. In addition to this, to help further refine it, in our perspective settings, we can actually choose the city, the date and the time for where the model is positioned. When we return to the window, you can see the shadows have changed. We could further refine this by returning to the settings and altering the time. Returning to the plan, it's important to highlight a feature that helps us orientate and position the building in its real world environment. You see on the plan we have a north symbol, which is pointing to true north, but the building's rotated in a convenient north-south, east-west manner for ease of working. What I can actually do is use this option here to orientate the view so that the building is then sitting on its true north alignment. As I actually do this, you'll see the labels attached to the zones which define the spaces within the buildings have actually orientated themselves so that they are easy to read. This view can then be further refined to turn into a site plan. We can then easily switch from site plan to construction plan. In the final tab within Navigator we can look at the documentation. So here we have proposed plans, in addition we have the elevation sections and the 3D view. And we also have some of the 2D information. You can see some updating actually begins to process. ARCHICAD is actually enhanced to run on multi-core processor machines, so if I have a quick look at the task manager, what you'll see is across the eight cores, the actual activities are passed between the processors to enhance the performance. In the case of this final detail in the bottom left, there are a couple of alterations I have to make to complete the detail. I'll select the view and open it with the layout as a reference. This enables me to see the detail I'm actually working on with the surrounding context of the other details on their page. To finish the detail, I have to add some timber boards across the top of the beam and also some fixing bolts. First of all, I'll select this board and use Multiply to spread these 155 millimeters. This means that as I cross the deck between each board, a five millimeter shadow gap is left. To add the studs into the positions here, I'm going to select the object tool, browse through the library to find the appropriate element, and then from the ghost preview, I can position this on these hotspots. All that remains to be done is for the notes to be updated. Once the detail has been completed, I can return to the page where the update will process and we can see the end result. This information can be output from the layout as either a plot, a PDF, a DWF, or a DXF or DWG up to AutoCAD 2010 standard.